Hello guys, it's Shitkin Plays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. So for today's video, as promised, I'm making an un undervolting and overclocking or overclocking and undervolting, depends on your mood. Uh, this time on the RX 6950 XT, okay? This also serves for the 6900 XT, the values will be slightly different, but the steps are the same, okay? So it works for the 6950 and the 6900 XT. Now let's go to the common questions. Common questions. Will you lose warranty by doing this? Well, no. no, no, no. Although brands may say yes, no. Because they can't even prove that you overclocked or not. And overclocking into the standard even more on the on the AMD suite or suite, yes, AMD suite, uh, won't make anything and you won't be burning your GPU with that, okay? Now, is it safe, for the second question, is it safe or not? Yes, it is perfectly safe. We are overclocking, but at the same time, we are also undervolting, so we are reducing the voltage, meaning that less stress will be put on the components, at least on the core and so on, so you are completely fine. No, it won't damage your GPU, okay? And for the third question, can I use it in all brands? I have the Aces blah blah blah, I have the XFX blah blah blah. It doesn't matter the brand. As long as it is the 6950 XT or the 6900 XT, it doesn't matter if it is from Sapphire, if it is from XFX, from Asus, MSI, Gigabyte, Gigachav, Gigachav... doesn't really matter. As long as it is a 6950 or 6900 XT, this works. Now, as for the overclocking and undervolting part, as always, I'm gonna use the AMD suite. So, the AMD Adrenaline software, you can also use MS Afterburner, but um, at least the AMD software is a bit more in-depth and it's way easier to use. At least, it's, it's more in-depth in terms of... How should I say it? I mean, it's in-depth but at the same time, pretty easy to use, that's why I use it, okay? So, it's basic thing. So, click on the right button of your mouse. If you have Windows 11 and if you have the May Preview drivers, this, the, um, the shortcut will also appear here, AMD Software Adrenaline Edition. If you have the older version of the drivers or Windows 10, it will appear like this, okay? AMD Software Adrenaline Edition, so click on it and the software kit will open, okay? That's it. So the first thing that you actually have to do is go to the performance tab here on the top. Then go to the tuning because you have matrix tuning and advisors and you want to go to the tuning tab, open it and you have this. So you have the global tuning, which is what you want. You can also make an overclocking and undervolting profile per game. Okay, if you have a game that's way heavier, you may do an overclocking and extreme overclocking for that game. And if you, if you actually have a game that's way lighter, you can also make an underclocking and undervolting profile for that game in order to in order to save power and not have as much power draw as before, okay? And even reduce temperatures because that's also a thing. Uh, for now, we're gonna use the global tuning. And as for the CPU, we don't want the CPU and we don't want to mess with the CPU, so let's... Yeah, let's do this. <laughs> I don't know the word, the correct word. <laughs> now, on the tuning control of the GPU, what you have to go, uh, what you have to do is this, manual tuning. It will be like this on default, okay? And you go here and select manual tuning. These menus will unlock and then you enable everything. So, GPU tuning enable, VRAM tuning enable, fan tuning enable, power tuning enable, and then you also enable the advanced controls, okay? Enable, enable, and not for the fans. For the fans, it is actually not needed, okay? But yeah, seems pretty fine to me. So the first thing and the most important thing, like I say in all my overclocking and underclocking videos, 
is the power tuning. So the power tuning is very, very important because some of the cards are power restricted and actually raising the power limit will, um, will kind of raise also the numbers of the power restriction. And this doesn't mean that your GPU will automatically consume more power just because you raise the power limit. That's not how it works. In most cases, the power consumption will be more or less the same. But in those scenarios where your GPU is actually power restricted and it needs more power to perform perform better, then raising the power tuning will raise a bit the power draw, but it will also raise considerably the performance and also may improve um, may improve some cases where you have stutters, okay? So the power tuning may also help in stuttering cases um, because the, the GPU may be power restricted, power limited, and by raising the power tuning, uh, you actually take take off those restrictions and the GPU performs as it should, okay? Depending on the brand of your GPU, you may have 10%, 20%, 50%, it depends on the model, okay? But just put it to the max and call it a day. Now, for the second step, we are going into the GPU tuning, which is actually the core tuning, because you have the GPU, okay? And you have the VRAM tuning, and firstly, we go into the GPU tuning, okay? Now, one thing with the RDNA 2 cards, so the RX 6000 series, is that uh, they actually work very well with a minimum and maximum frequency just 100 MHz apart, okay? Just 100 MHz. For the cards like the 6950, the 6950 XT, uh, I found that the best values in terms of performance per watt are 2500 here, and 2600 here. And yes, I know we are we are actually decreasing 49 megahertz of the maximum frequency, but don't sweat it because we will still have way more performance in the end. So yeah, don't sweat it. Now, 2500 and then 2600. Minimum frequency 2500, maximum frequency 2600, then apply changes, okay? So this is the first step that you should do and almost any, tw any 6950 XT will do these values. If you have a 6900 XT, you will most likely need to reduce to 2400, 2500, okay? Or maybe if you don't want to overclock and if you want to underclock in order to, uh, to push the, the voltage even lower, okay? But in normal situations with a 6950 XT, you want 2500, on the minimum and 2600 on the maximum frequency. By the way, as you see here, for example, on the clock speed, uh, as you see here, having a minimum and maximum frequency like this won't and doesn't mean, won't and doesn't mean, like I told you, uh, that the clock speed will be at 2500 all the time, okay? As you see here, the clock is at 100 megahertz. It just means that on 3D applications, like games or heavy 3D applications, the frequency will stay at a minimum of 2500 megahertz, okay? With a little offset, so it will be like 2450 megahertz, 2460 megahertz, it depends, okay? But this applies only to 3D applications, as you see here, 133 megahertz. So yeah. Now, as for the voltage, um, be aware that decreasing the voltage too much may uh, may actually enable things like black screens, blue screens, system crashes, system hangs. So it may happen, but don't worry, it won't damage your GPU, okay? All you have to do is like restart the computer and try again till you get your system stable, okay? But, well, I, I will give you my base results for the 6950 XT, and the minimum I could actually decrease the voltage to was 1120 millivolts, okay? And I can decrease it to around 1120 millivolts for it to be stable, okay? And when I say stable, I say like 100% stable because I tested all games in all scenarios and it is stable. I could decrease way more and it will be st it would be stable in some games, but it would not be stable in others. Imagine, for example, I go play Cyberpunk at, uh, at like 1050 millivolts and it will play flawlessly for hours. But once I go, for example, in Ass to Assassin's Creed Valhalla, it will immediately crash. If I try, for example, 1080 millivolts on Assassin's Creed Valhalla, it will also work, for example, for let's say half an hour, but then it will crash 
meaning that it is unstable. And after test, after test, after test, so after several hours of testing, I found that the sweet spot for me was 1120 millivolts. Okay, this was completely stable in all games for hours. It wouldn't crash, and in terms of performance per watt, it was the best results with 2500 MHz on minimum and 2600 MHz on maximum frequency, okay? This is a sweet spot. All cards are different, remember? So these results may not work for you in terms of voltage. Your card may need more voltage, but it also may need less voltage. So I'm using 11, 20 millivolts, but you may decrease to, for example, 11, 10 millivolts and see if it works. If it works for hours, just go once again and try to decrease to 1100, apply, game some more hours in some heavy games. If it does not crash, then go for example to 1090. Some more hours of gaming, if it does not crash, go once again to 1080 and so on till you reach your minimum value that's stable. Once you get a crash in game, you know that the value is unstable and you need to increase the voltage, okay? That's how it works. For me, it is 11, 20 millivolts. You can take this as a base and then increase or decrease the voltage as, as you are stable or not. That's my opinion and that's my tip for you. Now let's go to the VRAM tuning. As for the VRAM tuning, these cards, the, um, the 6950 XT cards, they actually bring better VRAM. That's one of the 50 XT cards things, okay? So for example, uh, while the 6900 XT will bring a 2000 MHz stock frequency, the, um, the, 20, the 6950 will bring 2250 MHz stock. So that's 250 MHz over the 6950 XT, which is considerably higher and in some games will bring a nice performance uplift. But the, the big point of this is that while the, the 6900 XT will usually manage to go to let's say 2100 or maybe 2200 at most, these cards can actually reach higher values and for mine, I can easily reach the 2400 MHz. And since this has a, an offset, so the, um, the VRAM has always an offset like the GPU core, so imagine if you select 2400, it will be like at um, 2380 or 2385 MHz, so it won't be completely precise, so I, like to have it at 2412, which is more or less my offset, which will make it 2400 in real case scenarios, okay? So that's my value. You also have the memory timing, so the fast timings are obviously better, but in some cases they will bring lots of instability. So my opinion on this, or my tip on this, is that you actually try, uh, that you actually try the stock values first, okay? Go to stock, apply, then go and select fast timings. Test on games once again. If it does not crash, then raise the values to 2300 MHz. Apply. Test once again. If it does not crash, 2320. If it does not crash, 2340. So with 20 MHz increments till you reach your, uh, your sweet spot per se, or the maximum VRAM overclock you can get without being unstable. For me, I prefer to have it on default, but with 2412, yes, 2412 MHz. I could reach a bit more, I, I can actually, but it makes no sense to me. If you want to tweak a bit more, just do it. If you want to, to try the, um, the 2400 MHz with memory timings, with fast timings, just try them. They actually may work for you. In my case, I get a bit of instability with 2400 and fast timings, but you may have a better car than me, a better bin car than me, and it may work for you, and it will bring better performance as well. So. That's that's the trade. For me, I prefer the default settings with a bit higher frequency than the fast timings, uh, so the non-default settings with the default frequency, okay? Well, we went to power tuning, then GPU tuning, and now VRAM tuning, and the only thing left is actually the fan tuning. The fan tuning, well, it comes with 86, it's a Red Devil version, okay, it's a, a Red Devil version, and it comes with 86 max fan speed, which is insane. This thing will be like at 65 degrees, and it will sound like a jet engine, and I don't want that 
at all. I mean, I hate noisy computers. I prefer a bit higher temperatures than noise. Um, and even decreasing this value to, let's say, 45. So from 86 to 45, so almost 40% difference, in, in this case, not almost, it's like 41% difference in terms of max fan speed, and the temperatures just won't go over 70 degrees, okay? So the temperatures will still be fine, and the fans will be just so much quieter and so much more enjoyable when gaming. So if you're actually using headphones all the time, I don't think it will matter to you, but for me, it definitely matters. I don't want noise close to my ears, so 45% is the max that I advise. In case you are actually having temperatures over 70 degrees, or at least over 75 degrees, then I advise you to, to raise um, the max fan speed in, in, in increment, increments, sorry, in increments, damn English, of 10. So 55, if the temperatures are still higher, go to 65. If you need more speed for lower temperatures, 75 and so on. But what, what I advise actually is 45% at max for quiet gaming while actually having lower temperatures, unless your model is shit. If your model is a crap, then you need to raise the fan speed. If not, 45% is more than enough. So guys, thanks a lot for watching and sorry if I missed something because, like I told you, I'm pretty tired. Um, sorry if I missed something. If you have any doubts, don't forget, leave your comment in the comment section and I will help you as fast as I can, okay? So like I told you, the values are a bit different for the 6900 XT, but the process, the steps are exactly the same. As for AMD, uh, AMD Smart Access Memory, just keep it enabled if you can, because it will bring a huge boost uh, in some games like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, uh, in some games like Forza Horizon 5, it will bring really huge boosts, Horizon Zero Dawn, and so on. But once again, if I miss something, comment section and I will answer as fast as I can. As always, you have my profile for download with a link in the description so you can actually download my settings and then just tweak, um, tweak with my settings as a base. You can watch the video and do it yourself or you can just download the settings um, and then tweak them. Okay, that's why I have the settings with link in the description. All you have to do is go here to this same menu go here to load profile, select the folder of your profile and open and bam, you'll have your my profile applied in your computer. That's it. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next video.